and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. I'm Jade Harrell, and I'm joined by Amber Clear and Jamie Ballantyne Dolby today. Hey, you two. Hey, sunshine. I love the hey. <laughs> that lets me know it's kind of copacetic, but you could get into something if you wanted to. Tell me what you're loving, Jamie. I am loving all of the women in my life uh, for March. I just think this is such a magical time that we're in right now. And I'm also loving St. Louis because, you know, 314 Day, we're going to make it the whole month. So mm -hmm. I'm loving all the women in my life and I'm loving 314 Day activities. I love it. I got one more to pitch to you. What does womanhood mean to you? For me, it means power. It means kind of just being a superhero with whatever it is that you have and making it work. It's not about superpowers. It's just being about your super self. And so I'm all about being me and whatever version that is for the day. And that's what womanhood is to me. I love it. Jamie, what are you loving about womanhood? What does it mean for you? I said, Jamie, I met Amber. <laughs> I am absolutely loving all of my gal pals. Uh, I did a boudoir shoot and it was super empowering because that's so far out of my wheelhouse. Like I'm the funny friend. Like I'm not like the, Ooh, diva. Uh, and honestly, just the experience with my friend was super fun. I love you guys because I feel like a tribe of women is just such a strong thing. And I love it. I love it. I love women empowering women. And I love gal pals. Yes. I can't get off of and am loving Doja Cat's woman song. I sing it, I work out to it, I clean dishes to it, I drive to it, I can't stop playing it, it's stuck in my head. <laughs> but it's Women's History Month and on today's show, we have two ladies who have made it their job to inspire, uplift and empower. We'll meet them next, right after this quick break. So please stay with us. Queen is just my everything. His smile did it. His smile, his eyes, his knowledge. My landlord, he decided that he wanted me to move based on the fact that I was transgender. Let's just respect people in everyday life for just being human. And welcome back to Let's Talk. For the past 35 years, March has been a time to celebrate the contributions women have made and continue to make to history, culture, and society. As we look forward to celebrating this year's Women's History Month with a theme of providing healing, promoting hope, we couldn't think of anyone better for today's show than the two ladies who are about to join us. Every day, they're filling their viewers' cups on their Own Your Now show, and we're honored to have them with us today. So please help me welcome Tracy Berry McGee and Yolanda Lankford with Own Your Now. Welcome, ladies. Hello, beautiful ladies. Thank you for having okay. us. I am so glad to have you, and I'm glad to have me a cup on the set because I knew I needed to have something in my cup. We talk about you filling up your audience's cup. Can you speak to where that came from and what it means? Well, you know, um, the thing about uh, women's history is we always have stories, right? And oftentimes uh, Yolanda and I ask the question, what's in your cup? Like, is your cup full or, or what? Is it overflowing? And that's the value of asking what's in your cup. Um, literally, we want to know what you're sipping on. But also, we also ask, like, is your cup full or is it overflowing? Because we want you to remember the value of sipping off the saucer. That's it. <laughs> And the sipping off the sa saucer talks to the excess. Now, maybe somebody else watching, like myself, may not even be up to their brim just yet. And I know you're about empowerment and upliftment. What do you say and how do you encourage women when their cups aren't quite very full, maybe even half empty? Well, you know, I always say that even if your cup is not all the way full, it's on its way. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you say my cup is half empty. You, empty, you have to look at it as my cup is half full. And we just encourage people to find the joy 
and every day. Um, and on my behalf, I always say, find that vibrant vibe that keeps you going uh, and gets you over the rim. It's such a powerful show that really now is starting to sweep our region and getting uh, acclaim and notice, but it had humble beginnings. And I'd love for my last question, for Tracy to take us through how Own Your Now came to be and its key message for women. Well, you know, I think that um, in the midst of the pandemic, everybody was struggling. Um, as uh, some people know, I lost my mom. And the key thing for me connecting with my mother, just like with a lot of people, Yolanda connecting with her dad, was asking um, to have a cup of coffee in the mornings. Um, but literally, the pandemic hit. A lot of social uh, unrest was happening. And we wanted to tap in as a therapist to just go online and ask everybody, what's in your cup? I wasn't doing well. I was struggling, I was dealing with grief, we all were. And so we tapped into the community and we wanted to bring something positive. So we asked people what was in their cup. That meant talking about businesses, uh, thriving businesses that started in the pandemic. Just connecting with each other is something that we needed in the city. And uh, it really showed us the value of us showing the world what positivity looks like. And so what is in your womanhood cup? What fills you as a woman, Lady O? And I'm going to let the, our ladies get in on it too. You know, I will tell you, I love being the essence of a woman. There are some things that as women we can do, uh, things we can wear as a woman. So just the whole essence of a woman is filling my cup. I love it. Jamie or, or Amber, I know you have been waiting to get on. What are some of your questions? So I love gathering with people and I love just connecting with people. But I think that society has sometimes made it where people focus on the negative sometimes when they get together. How do you keep people focused on the positive in their life instead of going about it being like a venting session? Well, you know, the thing about it is we're intentional. When we first said that uh, we're going to take this journey together, we wanted to show people what it looks like for us to get along. You know, nobody put us together. We decided we wanted to be together, the whole cup, because it's not just the two of us. We have two other phenomenal young women that's yes. a part of this journey. And uh, you have to be intentional about positivity, just like Amber, you're intentional about laughing out loud. We have to yeah, remember, absolutely. okay. It can be draining though, when someone, if you get together with someone you genuinely like and all they want to do, like they have so much stuff that's going on and they need to talk about it. But sometimes it's just, we got to learn to focus on the positive, I think. Yeah, you got to help them bring I mean, us back on the right. right. You know, someone might say something negative, but if you can say, I, I hear you, because mainly when people uh, say something negative, they want, to be, they want to be validated. They want someone to hear them. So if you say, oh, I, I hear you, you may not understand, then you can spin it back around and come back with the positive. I guarantee you. I have there it. any have there been any surprises um, during this journey of the show? Have you connected with somebody that you know what? I never thought I would be able to interview someone um, on this level or just kind of the journey itself. What's been the most surprising moment for you two? Wow. Well, well, you know, there's been so many, but I will say for myself, the moment we got to um, interview Jeffrey Osborne, yes. because, you know, I heard about all, heard all this music all my life, and I just never thought I would get that opportunity. And for him to tell his whole life story yes. in song, I mean, he was singing every song, the hit songs, and some songs we didn't even know anything about that were part of his life story. And just to hear that journey. Yeah. Um, because we've seen him for many years and you just don't realize someone's been singing for 60 years or 50 years. So yeah. that was one for me. How about you, Tracy? I think for me, it was the journey of us getting to where we are right now. Being a part of the ITV network has allowed us to see the value of women dreaming. We always say that we're seasoned and <laughs> this is our reality now. And we're this is not our profession. We didn't um, say, I think this is what I want to do. We just decided that once um, it, it, it got its own legs, we said, we're going to own it. Yes. And that's how we got to owning our now, you know, as a therapist, being mindful of being in the space together mm -hmm. is really important. Um, this is how we let our light shine. And I think that everybody mm -hmm. gets to glow as a result of it. So, and, and you know, I'm going to piggyback off that. The fact that we're all so very different, but I always tell people, even though you're different from someone, you are still 
you have so many, you all have so many things that you are alike. Yes. There's more things that you are alike that you can concentrate on. But I do love the fact that we're, we're all different and we all bring something to the mix. Yeah, I love that part about the owning your now. And that kind of refers to that perspective that you were talking about, whether you're looking at your cup half full or half in, empty. You two, this is not your profession. You kind of stepped out there on heart and faith, and now you're a full TV show broadcasting on the Thanks. TV network and, and much, much more. But you're now might have looked half empty when you started. Well, the way you described it as you were. Yes. Talk to us more. Tell us more about when you're in your now and how to move into a new now for yourself as opposed to the circumstances you're in. Barry, I'd love if you, I mean, Ms. McGee. <laughs> if you, would say, yeah. you know, for me, um, like I said, I'm a therapist and I think it's important that we're, we're transparent with people. Yes. You know, this is Women's History Month and everybody talks about being a strong woman and being a strong woman means being vulnerable. Um, so everybody can see those ups and downs, those highs and lows and how you get through those peaks and valleys. And it's a difficult challenge, but you know, I had to say, I'm not going to practice right now because I'm not well. But I also needed to figure out a way for me to also tap into the community to get fed, to, to make sure that my cup was full. But having friendships um, that are valuable to me, my friendship with Lady Yo, with the women on the set, my yes. friendship with you, Jade, Jamie, Amber, everybody um, has allowed me to say, okay, I'm going to be okay. Yes. Um, but you have to be able to say to everybody, I'm not okay. You know, we always say on the show, check on your strong, strong friends. friends, you know, and I think because women, we can look strong and we can come out the door with that hair done, that makeup done, and we look the whole all together, but you need someone to check on you. And that's yes. important, I think, for women to remember uh, as we go along our busy day, check on your, your strong, strong friends. friends. Absolutely. Not to make an assumption that they're doing all right just because they're strong, they're struggling, but they're looking at things differently. They're owning their now. And when we come back, we'll talk more about how they're defining for themselves what this life will be. Ladies, I have a feeling you're going to have your own cups overflowing by the end of this show. We need to take a quick break, but please stay with us. We have more with Tracy and Yolanda coming your way. Stick with us. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking with the ladies of the Own Your Now show, Tracy Barry McGee and Miss Yolanda Lankford. Lady Yo, welcome back, y'all. We've got to continue this conversation, defining ourselves and keeping our sisters. Yes, yes. Um, so the I Define Me movement is about empowering girls. And uh, I think that one of the things that we have seen the value in is making sure that our girls see positive role models um, that mentor what it looks like for us to own our now. So when we say the I Define Me movement, we're talking about girls all over the world that are picking up their journals, writing out their visions and making it a reality. And I will say, joining Tracy on this journey with the IDFIB movement has just been phenomenal. Um, we started with uh, young girls in small groups. And Tracy, you're celebrating your 18th year um, yes. as the director and a coordinator and founder yes. of Sister yes. Keeper. And you know, we want to uh, make sure everyone knows we have our heart set on doing a tour of HBCU. So that's the next big thing you can look for from a Sister Keeper. That's right. That's right. Wow. That just kind of gave me warm fuzzies. 18 years. I still remember when Tracy started this. So I feel like I just dated myself for sure. Um, but Tracy, you were instrumental for me in getting like I journal before, but I think I learned how to journal from the I Define Me movement and listening 
to just what it, because I think sometimes people buy journals, but there's also a method to journaling and how can journaling combine with the I Define Me movement? How do those two things work together and why are they so important when it comes to defining who you are? Well, you know, the thing about it for me is every girl, I know I started out when I was a little girl, Mm -hmm. I had this little diary with the key and I would say, do not enter. And in today's society, when you think about social media, our girls are putting a lot out there and the feedback that you get isn't always positive. So if you want to overcome bullying and you want to make sure that you're being a keeper to yourself, you have to start that journaling process. And you're right, Jamie, um, it can't just be about like sad things that Mm -hmm. are happening in your life. You have to affirm yourself. You have to realize society does not define me, the I define me, and I'm a keeper to myself first. So for our girls, it was a therapeutic process of not only just writing about like what's happening in your life, but writing stories and Mm -hmm. poetry and, and just making sure that you uplift yourself. Yes. And we always say a sister keeper is you. A sister sister keeper keeper is me. A sister sister keeper keeper is we. That's right. That's right. And Jamie, you've been a keeper. You've been a part of this process for about 18 years now, right? (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) I exactly dated myself. I can't say that I'm 24 anymore. So. (laughs) Well, I look 24. So it's great. It's great. You have the wisdom of someone older than 24, but you still look 24. She sure does. (laughs) Well, I know that um, for us, being a keeper is larger than um, just the STL area. You know, now we're global. We have chapters in New Mexico, Thailand, Jamaica, Germany, Ghana. But the goal is that um, when we say sister, I think people need to understand. Biologically, you may have a sister. Um, and I do. Yes. And um, But the A, it means we're all sisters. I say black, white, tall, short. Thick or thin, hazelnut blend, cantaloupe skin, just open up that multicultural Crayola box. If you find your color, that means you're a sister yes. or a brother. <laughs> if somebody wanted to get involved, you have all these chapters. How would they get involved with you guys? Well, you can actually go on our website. It's uh, www.idefinememovement.com. Um, we have a wellness mobile. Whenever you see our wellness mobile, it's the first in the country yes. that really focuses on girls defining themselves. We have products on the wellness mobile and the products are what? All the products on our wellness mobile are made by girls or women for girls or women. So when they come in there and they see the pillows, they see the lip balms and the soaps and the t-shirts, It just empowers them to know you can do it too. You can have a product, you can sell a product, you can have a career and you can be successful. And we might just feature you in the mobile. Yes, yes. How how important was that for you all to kind of reach back for the wellness mobile? I know that has been a dream of yours, Tracy, for a very long time. But when when the wellness mobile, when the first time I saw it outside of the History Museum, you were very intentional about putting the different products from other young women um, and adults in there. Why was that so important for you to partner up with those individuals as well? Well, you know, you're you're so right. The thing about it is branding is everything. That's like a cliche, right? But it's really important that our girls saw uh, products that look like them. You know, representation is everything. And so for them to be able to see this wellness mobile of different girls that look like them, coloring books and journals, we allow them to see that you can make your dreams a reality. And uh, the biggest piece for me was every time those doors are open, that we were able to give out free journals. We'll continue to do that because I think that you can write your ticket if you realize the value of how you believe in yourself and you can put that on paper and plan that out. You guys are like a small business incubator, but on a personal level. I love it. Yes. And, and you should see the faces of the girls when they come in there. They are just excited just to be in the space. And I want to also say on the mobile, we have, uh, they come in and they will make a confirmation that they will only do positive social media. That's right. So they can take their picture, get their selfie out take there, the pledge. take the pledge. And, and it's all about positivity. And you could just see their wheels turning when they're saying the pledge. You could just see their wheels turning when they see all these wonderful things, their yes. energy when they come off the bus. It's like, if you see what I see inside there and they invite their friends. So we know uh, that we are on a mission and yes, that we, we are, are um, yes, definitely we are. trying to bring positivity to our young girls out there in the community. I absolutely love it. Does this bus travel? Like, does this, does it go? It goes on the bus, go, go round, round and round. <laughs> it is. So 
Amber, literally, it looks like a UPS truck. Um, um, and we call it the I Define Me Wellness Mobile. And so, yes, we do travel. We go to a variety of different schools, um, different communities, uh, community events. Um, this last year, this is our third year that we're doing International Day of the Girl. We partnered with the History Museum. So whenever you see us, our doors are open. And we always invite our girls to come on because they're going to leave off knowing I define me, not society. And you can't but miss it. It is a, it's the size of a UPS truck, but it is lavender. Yes. And it has beautiful young ladies of every shade, shape, and size yes. on yes. the outside. So that lets everyone know that they're welcome. So you can't miss us when you, when you hear we're coming. Fantastic. So as we connect this even more deeply and succinctly to Women's History Month, I'd like you, Tracy Berry McGee, and you, Lady Yo, to help me with a couple of journal prompts for our listeners, our viewers, um, that looks at history, historically influenced, where I'm at now, and what we can hope for the future. Now, you know what I mean by writing prompts, Tracy. So we're gonna say, Take out a new page. Today you get to turn over a new leaf. Looking back, owning your now, and filling your cup in the future. Can you help me with those three prompts before we go? Well, I think it's important that we look at um, our past. That's the whole. Uh, that's the whole feel of Sankofa. You always want to look back mm -hmm. where you're going, but you want to realize that your past it does not always define you, but it is a part of your journey because trauma is real. So the first thing is look at your past. And then you want to look at your present and your present is saying, I am, Absolutely. the I am is very important. And then the next step is knowing that I am we, as women, we can come together and we can create a beautiful universe that we need in yes. our communities, our local, national and global communities. So at the end of the day, you're saying, I am we, but you can, you can define that I am, you have the, you have the ability to say, how will I own my now? Yes. So say, own your now and tell us, how do you want to write your story? So I am, I am dot, dot, dot. You fill in the blank. Nice, nice. And one of the premises to being able to own your now is loving yourself. Yes. So as we close, would you please share what the love acronym means and carry us out with that sister keeper pledge? Okay, we're going <laughs> to do this together. Yes. You know the love principle, but yes. L is listen. listen. You've got to listen to each other and you have to make sure that you um, not only listen to each other, but you listen to yourself. Absolutely. The O is observe. observe. Observe your environment. Observe the friends that you keep and make sure that you take care of one another. And the V is validate. Right. Affirm yourself. Say those I am affirmations. Write them down. But at the end of the day, the E is empower. Mm -hmm. That E-M, empower, is a we thing. And we're going to do it together. Yes, we're going to we keep are. doing it together. <laughs> yes, that's it is. we're sister keepers. Yes, sister, and that's with an A. <laughs> that's right. Let's go out with the pledge. All right, here we go. Everybody repeat after me. I am, I am who, who I am. I am who I am. I am unique. I am unique. I am we. I am we. I represent unity. Uh, I, I represent, represent unity. I'm going to finish it. I represent unity. I am diversity, a mosaic of people living me. I am my history and my story is my legacy. My voice delivers solutions. My mind seeks knowledge and my spirit flows with purpose. I am inspired. I am empowered. I am naturally me. I reflect positivity. I hold the key to my destiny. It's all about me. Say it with me, Lady L. I define me. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. A sister keeper is you. A sister keeper is me. A sister, a sister keeper, keeper is me. Is me. Absolutely. Hey, sister. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. You can grab a cup and join Tracy, Yolanda, and their co-hosts and contributors on the Odin Year Now show weekday mornings at 8.30. You can find all the details at ownyournowshow.com. You can also find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as YouTube. We're going to take one more quick break before we wrap things up. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Why do you not get me? I do. 
This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Jamie, Amber, that sisterhood really speaks to me that check on your strong friend. How many times have I been sitting in isolation? Because I'm supposed to keep up the strong front. And I have to tell you, both of them have given me a call or texted and said something that made all the difference. Remember, there's a power in vulnerability, Jade. There is a power in vulnerability. Teach, teacher. I was. I, <laughs> like, that like going through yeah. ice and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, how does that, you know, as you grew up in the program and have, have benefited from the journaling to the defining messages to keeping one another. What's it like to see that at 18 years as we celebrate Women's History Month and all that? Where's that land for you? I mean, I think for me, it, it's for me, my biggest connection um, to the I Define Me movement is really watching that journey is also inspiring for my own journey. And a lot of times we think about like womanhood and sisterhood is also kind of looking above somebody to mentor you. But my connection to Trace, Tracy is really through her kids. And I look at how watching them grow up has been so inspiring to me. And sure. sometimes we forget that sometimes the ones that can inspire us can be younger than us. They can motivate us in ways that remind you that someone's looking up to you, but also looking to the things that they've accomplished over the years has just been kind of a battery pack for me to say, keep going. You're not done. You have work to do. Um, so that defined me and realizing that my definition of me changes and that's okay as well. Oh, I want a piece of that. So your I am dot, dot, dot. How does your entry begin? Um, I think it's a very personal one, but one of the things I always say is um, I define me always. And I always have to remind myself that no matter how society views me, at the end of the day, I'm the only person that can define me. And if I change that from what it was last week, that's okay as well. And I don't need permission to change who I am. I love that. Amber, you know, where's your I am landing, you know, as you're defining for you? I think I constantly remind myself that I am strong. And what I mean by that is both emo emotionally, but also physically. And no matter what other people out there are seeing, my arms do this, but they also do this. So just because you can see them flying, like I can still bench press 175 pounds. So sometimes what people see isn't what people or people, isn't what I am. So I have to remember to see myself through my eyes and not through other people's. Yes, hunty, yes. But if you were looking at what I'm looking at right now, pretty sharp on the set. Both you and Jamie have inspired me in your work, in your positivity, in your determination, and your sisterhood. So I own that. Girls, that's all the time we have for now. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Please be sure you join us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or visit us at stltv.net. I'm Jade Harrell for Amber Clear and Jamie Ballantyne Dolby. We'll see you next time on Let's Talk. <laughs>
Because right. if I'm out, then I'm going to be out of town. Please That's why you got to get it planned. Are we recording? Okay. Sorry. Um, there. That's it. <laughs> okay. Now, how do we do this again? <laughs> okay. We're going to go ahead and take a um, screenshot of you all, of everybody. Uh, poetic justice, you ready over here? She giving me poetic justice vibes. Wait a minute. What is oh, it? Command, okay. control, command, F3? Three. 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 Okay. One, two. <laughs> Jamie, you ready? One, two. I'm ready. Three. One, two, three.